Hey guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and I have a really fun finish today. We're gonna do some white granite. And this comes per request of one of my viewers out there had emailed me and asked me if I could do a, uh, a white finish but instead of it being a real marble, which you see a lot out there, she wanted more of a granite effect, but she wanted very, very faint granite. And also she wanted to incorporate white metallic and some diamond dust and some glitter. So we're gonna take all three of those um, mediums and we're going to make one cool finish. So let's see what we can do. All right, so I've started off with stone coat countertop, regular epoxy. I've tinted it with their new white base tint. I love it. Little bit goes a long way. And you're noticing I'm doing my uh, samples uh, today on a little bit bigger sample board. And that's something that you guys, um, if you are doing this, uh, whether you're doing it as a DIYer in your own kitchen or even as a professional, you need to get used to doing your samples on bigger size boards because you can do a sample and get it really pretty on a very small board. But when you take that pattern and that finish and you put it on something bigger, even if it's just a bigger sample board or a big countertop, you really now have an element of size that's kind of either working for or against you. So once you find a finish that you really like, practice on it two or three times Make sure it's recreatable and make sure it's recreatable at scale. So we're gonna see if this works. All right, so I've taken my um, white base tint. I hit it just a little bit so that um, I could spread it out evenly a lot easier because it's a little bit chilly in my shop today as compared to how it usually is because you know we're in Texas and one day it's 40 and one day it's 92. So I'm just gonna spread this out. And right now, all I'm trying to do is get epoxy over all of the surface. I'm not really worried about it self leveling and being perfect. I just wanna get it out so that I have some sort of epoxy amount on the finish. Now I've prepped this sample board with a three quarter inch MDF sample board. And it measures, I think right at 20 inches by a little over four feet. I've painted it with bare paint and primer in one in natural gray. I really like natural gray as a background for a white finish because I know that my base tint is not gonna stay pure white because I'm adding different materials to it. So if I had a pure white background, right here at your edges, where your epoxy is the thinnest, you'll see that stark white kind of shine through. So I like to go a little darker on um, my base tint when I am doing a white finish. Okay, so I've laid it all out. Torch it. Now I'm gonna come back with white metallic, and this is Stone Coat Countertops White Mica Powder. And I'm just gonna randomly pour that in different areas. There's no really rhyme to reason, no set pattern. I just wanna get that material onto the board. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with, I have clear, epoxy that I've added a little bit of stone coat countertop diamond dust and their white glitter. Give it a little bit more pop. Now, because we're playing on monotones of white, you won't have a huge contrast, but you'll definitely have enough to be able to, when you walk up to the countertop, 
to when the light catches it just right, it'll be amazing. So I've laid out the second um, coat. Now this time I want to come in with my chop brush and I'm going to prime my chop brush to get some material on the brush so that if I were to go in straight with a dry brush, all I'm going to do is pull off the material. But because I primed it, now I'm not going to be pulling all that material off. And I'm just going to randomly chop. I'm not trying to blend it all. I'm just trying to get a little bit of interest by chopping it. I'm not doing in this in any pattern. I'm not going in a line or up and down. It's very random. And man, what a really pretty finish. And you'll notice I'm not scared to chop. I'm not going straight up and down. I'm really getting in there and moving that epoxy and letting it mix and meld. And I'm using the edge of my chop brush. So I'm really getting some surface tension out, breaking up bubbles. I have not melded this at all. I'm going to take out, so I have quite a bit of material in my brush. You can see that. So all I'm going to do now, kind of pat that out. All right, this is gorgeous. Holy cow. I'm not real sure if the camera is able to pick up the depth of this but it is gorgeous. Okay, so here's a pro tip for you guys. My hands were full of epoxy because I used my, I used my hands to kind of meld it. Before I grab my torch, I take regular plain 91 isopropyl alcohol, clean my hands, before I grab any of my tools. In this case, it's my uh, torch, which I've wrapped with um, plastic so that I don't mess up my button. So now I'm gonna come in, torch out these bubbles. All right, so because I know I'm gonna do a granite effect, I want my epoxy to set up just a bit before I go in and start manipulating it because I don't want my epoxy to move a lot. So I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, and then I'll come back and we'll go to the next state, okay? Okay, so I'm back. We've let this sit a few minutes. And now I'm gonna, I still want to play with some background uh, effects. So I'm grabbing my deep silver metallic um, which is the Stone Coat Countertop Deep Silver Mica Powder mixed with 91% alcohol. And I mix it at about a quarter of an ounce to eight ounces of alcohol. You can play with that ratio depending on how opaque you want that um, mica to be. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do it, I wanted a pretty fine mist. And I'm gonna come up here and very lightly, I'm gonna hit that because again, I want this to be such a subtle, subtle piece. Now that I've got a light mist, now I want to come over and I've made my, my bottle where it shoots a line. And now I'm going to shoot almost a, like a, a, a vein or a fracture. All right, that's all I wanna do, and I'm gonna let that play a little bit and come back in just a few minutes and see what else we can do. Okay, so we're back. We've been about 10 minutes maybe, and I'm really liking how the mica is moving on this piece, uh, especially this vein that I hit. It's kind of fracturing out just a little bit. So I know from the description in the email that she wanted something that was very, very, very light gray, uh, but she wanted kind of a fracture look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a fog of a coastal gray, Rust-Oleum satin, 
coastal gray. I'm gonna do it from pretty high up so that I get a fine mist of paint that lands. And then I'm gonna hit it with some clear 91% uh, alcohol. So let's see how this goes. Let's see if it's gonna give us a, a dark enough finish. So I'm gonna hit it from up high and I'm only gonna do a little area at a time. Oh, wow. Okay, I really like that. And I'm gonna just let this set a little bit. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this other end. And I'm gonna do some areas a little darker. All right, so we're gonna let this sit a little bit. Okay, so I really like how this is starting to lay out. Um, I am gonna add a little bit more of the silver mica, but this time I'm gonna add it with my hand so that I can get some bigger spots. Little different look. And then I'm gonna come back with clear and do the same thing. That white mica is really making some pretty effects on here. Mm, yes, I really like that. All right. I know I say it all the time, but I think I'm done. But I can't promise you that I'm done. But I think I'm done. Maybe I'm done. Okay, so just a quick recap. I started with stone coat countertop uh, epoxy, and I mixed about two thirds of that with just their white base tint by Illumilite that they uh, now sell on their uh, website. It's the new color. And then I came back with white mica powder tinted epoxy and a little bit of uh, epoxy that's just diamond dust and white glitter. So I laid down my white, randomly put in my other two colors, chopped it together, let it set for just a little bit. Then we hit it with dark silver metallic. And I even ran a vein through with the metallic spray. Let it set just a little bit, fogged it, hit it with alcohol, and now we're just letting it set. So it'll continue to move for four or five hours. You'll continue to see the granite effect get a little bigger, a little less distinct, which is what she wanted. She wanted very, very, very light amount of uh, fracturing. And I guess we're done. So if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for further notifications and subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave me some comments down below. Until next time, you got this.